Hello everyone. How are you doing? I hope you are all keeping well. First of all, I really appreciate your interest and enthusiasm towards learning. Today, we are going to learn the second lesson in our Hornbill textbook of class 11. That is, we are not afraid to die if we can all be together. First, watch these video clips. What did you observe in these clips? Do you think the people were insane or crazy? Or do you think they are adventurous? Why do people are interested in such a risky and dangerous events? Yes, this shows their audacious or courageous nature. But why danger is an exciting task to them? it is not fun is it this is face to face with death in the face of such devastating consequences why are some people drawn to risky endeavors like to surfing waves which are 10 stories high launching off cliffs on skis or sailing through the air in a wingsuit the answer may lie in a complex mix of genetic psychological and environmental factors it is maybe a mix of influences imitation or desire to stand one amongst the few people in the world we can surely understand one thing despite these dangers human beings have desire or thirst for adventures all right the present story is about such an adventure taken up by a family it is not a 10 minute adventure 
but an extraordinary and hazardous round the world voyage undertaken up by Gordon Cook's family. You all know that traveling is one of the greatest human freedoms ever. If you want to know about the adventurous traveling, see the world through the eyes of these travelers. Let's begin. Well, we all know that a round the world voyage or crossing the seas is not a piece of cake, which means it is not an easy task. It demands extraordinary bravery and skills. In such a situation, we have to fight not with the outer force, but with the inner strength. In this story, we are not afraid to die if we all can be together, the Gordon Cook's family exhibited ultimate courage and unity in a war with water and waves in the ocean for their survival. We all know that the writer wanted to duplicate or recapitulate the round the world voyage made by Captain James Cook. Do you know who is James Cook? You might have studied about him in the history classes. He made detailed maps of Newfoundland prior to making three voyages to the Pacific Ocean, during which he achieved the first recorded European contact with the eastern coastline of Australia and the Hawaiian Islands, and the first recorded circumnavigation of New Zealand. Here you could see the photo of Captain James Cook. He was a British explorer, navigator and cartographer. So cartographer means a person who makes maps. Read this quote. A family does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be united. Through this quote, you could understand the unity or relationship among members of a family is sometimes tested severely not to break their relationship but to make it stronger forever. Now let's move to the introduction of this chapter. In this chapter, the writer narrates his thrilling journey across the sea. He wanted to go around the world by sea in the same way Captain James Cook had done about 200 years earlier. In July 1976, the writer set sail from the seaport of Plymouth in England with his family for this long journey. The writer had built a huge boat that was 23 meters long. He called it Wave Walker. What a beautiful name. It looked like a ship. The writer hoped to complete his journey round the world in three years. It was a long journey which was to be a 2,55,000 kilometers journey. During this journey, the writer and his family had hazardous experiences. They faced many troubles. They were face to face with the death. At that time, the family showed ultimate courage, unity and determination which was exhibited even by the small children. Here you could observe the passengers or the characters of the story, we are not afraid to die if we can all be together. Here you could see the photo of the family, Gordon Cook and his family. The first one, the narrator, who was the captain of the ship and he was a 37 years old businessman. Mary was his wife. Susan and Jonathan were their children. Susan was the daughter. She was 7 years old. Jonathan was the son who was 6 years old. There were two more important characters, the crewmen. Here crew means the sailors or workers on a ship. 
The crew men were one American Larry Vigil and another one Swiss Herb Sigler. You could see a boat here. It looked like a ship which was built by Gordon Cook and his family. It was called Wave Walker. Yes, let us see the themes of the story. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. As we know, theme is the subject matter or the ideas reflected in the story. This story reflects a variety of themes. The first one is human nature of knowing and taking on challenges. We have already discussed that human beings have a tremendous courage in accepting and facing challenges. Their courage is elevated when they face problems and challenges wholeheartedly. The second theme is human instinct for survival. Have you ever watched the movie Life of Pi? Or do you watch Bear, Bear Grylls survival shows? Humans fight rigorously for surviving when they are in dangerous conditions. The next theme is human bravery, courage, unity and determination which in this story are exhibited even by the small children. Let's begin by learning some of the names of important parts of a boat. The hull is the body of the boat that floats in the water. The front of the hull is called the bow. The back of the hull is called the stern. The keel is the weighted fin at the bottom of the boat. Its weight gives it stability, reducing tipping or heeling, while its shape keeps the boat from sliding sideways. The rudder, which is controlled by the tiller, is the foil that is used to steer the boat. The deck is the top of the hull. The cockpit is the low space in the deck where the crew sits. The companionway is the opening to the cabin. The tiller attached to the rudder moves side to side to steer the boat. When looking forward, the right side of the boat is starboard, the left is port. A smaller fixed sail called a jib adds more power. The hull is the body of the boat. In this picture, you could observe the different words used for the parts of a boat. In this image you could see the mast. Mast is the pole here. The next one, jib. It is a triangular stay sail set forward of the foremast. You could see in this image. The stern is the back or most part of a ship or boat or technically defined as the area built up over the stern post. Here are some of the important words of this uh, lesson. First one is voyage. It is a journey in an ocean. Gales means hues or big winds. 
the next one is anchor it is a tool used to hold or grip the bottom of a boat so we all know that a compass is a magnetic or electronic device used to determine the directions of a boat or ship the next one is steering you could see here steering is used to control the direction of a boat in the next image you could observe this is hatch it is a door in a floor next one lifeboat or life rafts and oil skins they are used to save lives in turbulence or in a dangerous situation and uh, the last one is canvas it is a piece of cloth in this story the narration of the events happened in three sections the first section round the world voyage begins the first section opens on a cheerful note the narrator and his family are all set for their ultimate dream to duplicate the around the world voyage made 200 years earlier by captain james cook they have perfected their seafaring skills they begin the voyage and pass the first phase of journey pleasantly there before heading east they took two crewmen for help in tackling one of the world's roughest seas that is the southern indian ocean the two men were american larry visual and swiss herb sigler the second section the attack of the big wave this part of the narration covers the hazards faced by the voyagers they faced an extremely fatal and disastrous situation they began to face strong gales here gales means winds huge winds despite the worst weather they had a wonderful holiday on christmas they were troubled by huge and gigantic waves and horrible storm despite getting injured the captain maintains his self control and applies every possible way to tackle the critical situation the third section ultimate victory the children provide moral support to the narrator under the captaincy of the narrator they managed to reach isle amsterdam the narrator proves his skills and receives the title of the best daddy and the best captain from his children all right why do gordon's family take up such a big and dangerous trip the story begins here in july 1976 the narrator his wife mary son jonathan and daughter susan set sail from plymouth england to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by captain james cook here voyage means a long journey especially by ship in an ocean they took the voyage in their professionally built ship called the wave walker accompanied by two experienced sailors one is larry visual an american and herb sigler a swiss to tell before starting this journey the narrator and his family had honed the seafaring skills for the past 16 years by devoting their leisure time to practicing on british waters here seafaring skills refers to the skills required to navigate a vehicle through the waters the first part of the journey that is 1,5000 kilometers was completed pleasantly which they had planned they pleasantly sailed down from the west coast of africa to cape town then they were to enter the world's roughest sea it was the southern ocean there before heading east they took two crewmen for help in tackling one of the world's roughest sea 
we already knew that the two men were Vigil and Siglo. They began the voyage and passed the first phase of journey pleasantly. While they were heading to east, they faced the world's roughest seas and encountered strong winds. The weather turned very bad. On December 25th, they moved ahead 3,500 kilometers east of Cape Town. Despite the worst weather, they had a wonderful celebration of Christmas and New Year. However, the following days were one of the worst faced by Gordon's family. High waves roared and lashed the ship on both sides. The first sign of impending disaster. They hoped that the weather would change soon, but it changed for the worse. On January 2nd, there were huge waves. The huge waves haunted them. The ship rose to the top of each wave. They had put up only a storm jib or a small triangle sail used in front of their ship. Sky immediately grew dark. The screaming sound of the wind was painful to the ears. In order to slow down the speed, they dropped storm jib also. They secured everything tightly with the ropes. They attached lifelines to their life rafts. Here, life rafts or small boats for life saving. Then they put on their life jackets. About 6 p.m., there was a dreadful silence. A huge cloud was seen close to the back of the ship. But it was not a cloud, it was a terrible wave appeared vertically. Let us see the next slide. Disaster and its aftermath. They were caught in the storm. The road changed into a thunder. The writer thought that their ship ride over the wave. It could overcome the waves, but there was a dreadful explosion that shook the deck. A torrent of water broke over the ship. Meanwhile, the writer's head smashed into the steering wheel. He was thrown overboard. He was aware that he was sinking below the waves. He accepted the fact that his end was near. He was losing consciousness. Suddenly, his head hopped out of the water. He saw that the wave walker was turning over into the sea. The poles on the ship were almost horizontal. Then suddenly a wave threw it upright. The writer's lifeline rope was pulled at him with a jerk. 
that he was thrown back onto his ship. Then the waves tossed him around the deck like a doll. His left ribs cracked, which means his bones below his chest were made a cracked sound. The other was thrown back onto the deck. His teeth were broken and his mouth was filled with blood. Somehow he found the steering wheel and tried to control the ship for the next wave. At 6 p.m., tremendous explosion shook the deck and powerful flow of water broke over the ship. Wave walker was sinking and the captain was badly injured. Captain kept his courage and found the wheel and lined up the stern for the next wave. There was water everywhere on the ship. He could feel that the water entered the lower part of the ship. But he could not dare to leave the steering wheel. Suddenly, his wife Mary appeared and said, We are sinking. The writer asked Mary to take the wheel and he himself went down to see what could be done. They were struggling with the storm. When he went down, he saw Larry and Herb trying to pump out the water. Broken pieces of wood were hanging all around. Cloth, crockery, charts, tins and toys were floating about in the deep water. The writer half swam and half crawled into the children's cabin. He inquired about them. Sue said her head had been hurt a bit and there was a big bump above her eyes. It was a terrible condition. The writer had no time to attend it. Here Sue was the daughter of the narrator that was Susan. It was really a terrible condition because he was not only a captain, he was also a father. He had to save his family from this great disaster. He had to plug or stop the hole from where the water was gushing or flowing into the ship. He knew that if it was not done, the ship was sure to sink. Meanwhile, he came to know that the electric pump was also not working. It had short-circuited. The water level was rising in the ship threateningly. The writer was luckily able to connect another electric pump and plug the big holes also. They had to keep pumping and steering throughout the night. They sent audio signals for help. Here the Mayday calls. Mayday calls means the audio signals. But there was no reply as they were in a remote corner of the world. His daughter Sue's head had swollen alarmingly. Her eyes looked terribly black and she had a deep cut on her arm. The both crewmen were pumping out like mad people. They were pumping out the water from the ship. They did not receive any reply for their Mayday calls. Mayday calls are radio telephonic words which signal aircrafts or ships struck in a disastrous situation. They are usually sent for help, 
but they did not receive any reply. Susan was hurt badly, but the aim of the narrator at this point of time was to save the life of his family. He was consistently working to fix the holes and repairing the ship, otherwise it would have surely sunk. He was facing a lot of problems when their hand pumps started to block up with the garbages and other stuffs were floating and blocking the pumps and the short circuit were creating an additional problem. During this adventurous journey, the narrator faced many problems due to the storm. He used his presence of mind for solving these problems. Here you could observe in this slide the problems versus efforts. The first problem was the boat rose to the top of each wave. So what he did? He slowed down the speed of the boat for solving this problem. Another one, the screaming sound of the wind. It was growing. So they had put up a storm jib to control this. About 6 p.m. there was an ominous silence. It was like an evil silence. So they were ready and prepared, made lifelines ready. They secured everything tightly with the ropes. Next one, to check the flooding of water in the ship, he made a waterproof hatch cover with a canvas. As we have already discussed, he replaced a malfunctioned electric pump with, a, with another electric pump. Courage and unity of Gordon's family. When the writer asked his daughter, why she had not told of her injury. She said, I did not want to worry you when you were trying to save us all. By the morning of January 3rd, the water level was quite under control. It was 15 hours since the wave had hit the ship and they had survived. They could have two hour of rotation but still a lot of repair had to be done in the lower parts of the ship. It did not seem possible that the wave walker would be able to reach Australia. When the writer had checked the map, he calculated that there were two small islands. One of them was Amsterdam. To reach this small island, it was pinpricks in the vast ocean. This phrase expresses the search for two small islands in the vast ocean, but their only hope was to reach these spots in the vast ocean. That could be possible only if the wind stopped. It was January 4th. They had been pumping the water continuously for 36 hours. Then only a few centimeters of water left on the ship. They breathed a sigh of relief. However, their relief seemed to be quite short-lived because by that evening, the sea again witnessed bad weather. They could not sail on the main mast or pole. The pressure could tear apart the damaged ship, so they hoisted only the storm jib. Mary found some meat and biscuits for them. They had their first meal in almost two days. Despite of several hindrances, 
he kept on trying for survival of his family he was also supported by his family members during this sue his daughter despite of being hurt badly was not expressing her pain as she did not want her father to worry about this at that point of time he get that he would not be able to sail the ship to australia so he calculated for nearby islands there were two small islands in east direction within a few hundred kilometers this was the turning point of the story defeated by the situation the narrator decided to console his son jonathan but it was quite amazing the son was consoling the other and said we are not afraid to die if we can all be together this built energy and enthusiasm inside an extremely tired father and captain he was astonished to see his 6 year old as determined and brave as anyone else in the ship he decided to fight the sea in order to save his family this also boosted the morale of the couple who were jolted into action by their fearless kids sue and john were injured but they said that they were not afraid to die if they could all be together this shows the unity among the family members their determination to fight against the danger jonathan expressed his fearlessness and courage when he said that they were not afraid of dying if they all could be together sue expressed her love and gratitude for her parents by making a greeting card she was strong enough not to let her parents know about her serious injuries by the morning of january 6th wave walker had come out of the storm the wind had eased the writer went in the chart room and made a study of the charts and made other calculations finally at 2 pm he came to conclusion that they could get an island at 185 degrees he asked larry to go accordingly he expected to see the island at about 5 pm then he went down and dodged off in his cabin as he was dead tired he went to sleep in the cabin he woke up at 6 pm and was thinking he missed the island but jonathan showed him the nearby island where they had reached they were happy and cheerful as they got what they had been fighting for their survival can i have a hug john asked why am i getting a hug now the writer asked because you are the best daddy in the whole world and the best captain replied john you have found the island sue said what the other shouted despite all odds the boat reached its destination albeit later than expected the writer went running to the deck he could see the complete outline of the island of amsterdam it was only a dull piece of volcanic rock with a little vegetation but it was the most beautiful island in the world for him they anchored offshore for the night the next morning 
28 inhabitants of the island cheered as they helped them to come on the shore. It was a happy ending. In this slide, you could see the qualities of the characters. Narrator or the captain, he was a man of great courage, commitment and conviction proved to be the best captain as well as the best father. Second, Mary, his wife, who always stood by her husband in all the ups and downs and consider his dreams as her own. Susan was a brave girl. Her bravery determined her father's resolve to fight the sea strong storm. Jonathan showed bravery and fearlessness in the crucial moment. He rejuvenated the hope of his father by remarking, we are not afraid to die if we can all be together. Significance of the title. The title is taken from the Jonathan's remarks we are not afraid to die if we can all be together. It brings out the bravery, unity and courage of the captain's family and love each member has for the other. This is a story of extreme courage and skills exhibited by a family of four. A little more nervousness would throw off balance and the inevitable death would swallow everyone up. Along with the adults, the two children too are worth mentioning as they showed exemplary courage and understanding even in the face of death. The faith in one's optimism, not despairing hope even in difficult circumstances and the presence of mind of the captain are the instrumental qualities which proved the journey successful even after strong hurdles.